Hip pain is a problem that can be found in people of all ages, not just senior citizens. Hip pain can come about from a single event trauma, such as a sports injury or a car accident, a slip and fall. What usually happens is the hip structure is misaligned and it doesn't recover all the way and the patient walks in such a way that causes uneven weight distribution or abnormal weight distribution to the hip joint. It can also come from repetitive trauma such as jumping, running, and any kind of action that involves repetitious axial trauma to the hip joint. A perfect example would be someone who plays basketball a lot and does a lot of layups and jumps and lands on one leg. Uh, this is the kind of thing that can gradually cause osteoarthritis to develop in the hip. But the other possibility is gradual wear and tear of the hip joints. Now, this is what I'm gonna focus on in this video. This is a model of a pelvis, and as you can see, it's made up of two flat bones, left ilium, the right ilium. It's got the sacrum. This is called the pubis symphysis. It's a tough ligament that connects the flat bones together and of course these are your hip joints. Now the pelvis is a highly underappreciated structure in human anatomy. It is the linchpin that connects your torso, your upper body, with your lower body. It enables us to stand upright as a fulcrum. It serves as a site for many muscle attachment points. From the front, your abdominals, in the back, your erector spinae, your postural muscles. Here, your gluteus maximus, gluteus minimus, the butt muscles, and the muscles of the hip. Now here's a pathway that not many people are familiar with. If you are inactive, if you're one of these individuals who's sedentary, either by choice or perhaps you injured yourself or had something happen where exercise or regular exercise makes it difficult for you to do. When you sit down, you disengage the muscles of your spine. Your postural muscles sort of turn off somewhat. Same thing with your gluteus muscles, the muscles of your legs, your hip flexors, and so forth. When muscles are inactive, when they're not exercised, they tend to atrophy, which means they shrink in size and sometimes they shorten. This changes the dynamics of your joints, of your posture. This is the neutral position of your pelvis when viewed from the side. Anterior pelvic tilt looks like this and this is characterized by an accentuated lumbar curvature. This is called posterior pelvic tilts when the opposite occurs when your pelvic pelvis tilts backwards like this and I'm exaggerating somewhat and the characteristics of this are a flattened straight or even bowed out lumbar spine. Anterior pelvic tilt is associated with weak abdominal muscles because remember the abdominal muscles attach here and connect to the bottom border of your rib cage. So if they're weak, they allow the pelvis to gravitate this way. It's also associated with tight quadricep muscles. The quadriceps are the muscles that extend your knee, your lower leg, and they happen to attach at this point. So if you could imagine a muscle that is that starts here and connects to your patellar ligament, if it's tight, it's gonna pull that pelvis forward. And the other thing is that the hamstrings in the back could be weak and atrophy, allowing that pelvis to tilt forward. Now with posterior pelvic tilt, that's usually associated with weak spinal muscles, weak quadriceps muscles or atrophied quadriceps muscles and tightened hamstring muscles. The hamstrings originate here and connect again to the lower leg. So if those are tight, they'll pull the pelvis backwards like this and the effects will go straight up to the spine flatten your lumbar spine and make your shoulders curved forward and your head will tilt forward like this. Actually, either anterior pelvic tilt or posterior pelvic tilt can cause anterior weight being of the head at the top as the body tries to balance itself. So when the pelvis is not in neutral position, it's either anterior or posterior, then it affects how your hip joints contact the pelvis. And I'll show you a closer view here. So let's say you're standing and your femur is perpendicular to the ground and your posture is such that you have anterior pelvic tilt. It'll put more pressure on this part of the femur head. If you have posterior pelvic tilt like this, most of the weight is gonna be distributed in this part of the femur head. If you have a high hip, let's say your, 
hip is high on the on the right and low to the left, you'll have something like this. And then you'll have most weight bearing on this part of the femur head, which is unnatural. These are the kind of things that can cause accelerated pitting and osteoarthritis in your hip joints. So the idea then is if you have hip pain, determine if you either have anterior pelvic tilt or posterior pelvic tilt. If you have anterior pelvic tilt, you have a sway back and your pelvis is tilting forward, then try doing exercises that involve stretching the quadriceps muscles and strengthening your hamstring muscles in the back. Tighten them and shorten them somewhat to pull that anterior tilt backwards into neutral. Also, if you have anterior pelvic tilt, focus on strengthening your abdominal muscles, doing crunches to tighten up and strengthen that core so that it pulls that anterior tilt backwards back into neutral. If you have posterior tilt, if your lumbar spine is flattened like this when you're standing or sitting, then what you want to focus on is strengthening the quadriceps muscles and stretching the hamstring muscles, the opposite of anterior tilt. If you are able to strengthen the quadriceps muscles, make them stronger and shorten them, they'll pull that posterior tilt back to neutral, but at the same time you need to stretch those hamstring muscles to allow that to happen. Once you can get your pelvis back to neutral, then the hips will sit into the acetabula. Then you'll return normal weight bearing to the femur heads on either side. They'll be at the proper angle. Then at that point, you should do exercises that maintain it.